up for a weapon scan, or I'm gonna have to frisk you. Hands off, or I'll rip them off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, yo, hands up. If you a little different, party don't stop. When you this gifted, lifted up in the air to all you people that stare. Yo, we don't care. I said, crazy as I am, I love it. I am different. I'm one in a mill, not one to miss a thing. No, I'm a go. Wherever my heart go, wherever my heart go. Look. I gave you everything. I didn't love her. Really? That's it. It's a bit late for that. The only reason I met with you this morning was to let you know I knew. And to do the right thing. You were gonna turn me in? Uh, boys get what you needed? Yeah, looks like a cover-up kill. Probably saw something you shouldn't have. Sounds right to me. Yeah. Hello, Draven. Yeah, who's this? So when I think of our guest today, I think of a superhero. I think of someone, I mean, this man has the acting chops, he has the physique, he has the charisma. Oh, here he is today, Mr. Alex Barone. Superhero, David, thank you. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I appreciate that. You make me feel like a superhero. Oh, God. Say it. Help us save this world. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. We do need that. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Um, sure. And um, listen, I'm, I might as well just say why, why I, I saw on, on, on your social media about uh, um, this role that you're going out for? Yeah, yeah. I well, tell it's you, not really the role I'm going out for. It's a role I'm trying to make happen because I feel like I am that that role. It's me, you know. So I'm trying to put it out there to the universe. Hopefully, the universe, the Marvel universe, gets me back in return. <laughs> Marvel, hire him. <laughs> He's Listen freaking to amazing. <laughs> no, I saw I saw the drawings of it. And I went, whoa. I mean, I want to like blow up that poster and put it on my wall. This is uh, great. No, thank uh, you. Thank I guess, you. Yeah, for for the audience, it's the character of the the Nightcrawler, who's a Marvel character. You know, me and him have the same exact hands. He's got three fingers in both hands. Uh, he's from Germany, uh, which I'm not, but it's La La Land, right? We can make that part happen. Other than that, we have the exact same physique. He's been my favorite character since I was a kid. And, I put that out and uh, David saw it on social media and that's what we're talking about. So we'll hopefully make it happen, baby. Oh, uh, we, you, th this has got to happen. You'd be perfect in that role. I mean, you're the, you're, I mean, it's you. Thank you. And yeah. how do you know you're not German? Did you, what is that test that you take to? Ancestry.com. I actually do have 40% German in me. So what's up, Marvel? <laughs> Let's make history by making the first diverse superhero, right? With an actual authentic you know thing happening i think it's great i mean and you know the and those posters will sell like hotcakes yeah cool yeah. and uh, love everybody loves hotcakes uh yes i like hotcakes and crepes crepes david i have an idea what <laughs> when all this ends all the shenanigans yeah. let's get some hot cakes and crepes together okay that's a great title of a film. <laughs> <laughs> let's do the film. Yeah, so let's write the film while we're actually eating and doing that. Oh, okay. I love it. I love it. So I mean you say you're you're you have forty percent German you. Where where are you? Where where were you born? Where are you from? Uh so I was born in Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. Um 
moved to Los Angeles six years ago from there to pursue the dream. Mm -hmm. um, my mom is my mom's whole side is Cuban, and my biological father's side is, is German and French and uh, a bunch of other things. So I'm like a mutt mixed with Cuban. I like got all that going on, and I have a brother, two sisters, and then my, my mom and my dad. They all live back in Baltimore, and uh, they were actually supposed to all come and visit last month, but then you know with all this stuff happening, they were like, well, I might wait a wait a little bit. So yeah, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see him again. Yeah, I know. I'm like craving to see my mom and my uncle and uh and right now I'm seeing my lovely four walls. <laughs> Where are they not in Los Angeles? No, my mom is in the San Francisco Bay Area and okay. my uncle is from. Yeah, I'm I'm up from there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great uh it's a great little place and it's not as crazy as as uh LA right now. Yeah, it's not. No. It's a lot cheaper too, right? Yeah. But but you and I are here because we love crazy. <laughs> we do. We love crazy. Crazy in the uh, good way. So we could create some amazing work. You gotta be a little crazy to uh create, right? Right. Which you do. I mean listen, I, here's a name that I was reading, uh, going over about you. I mean, of course, I know you, but I was reading stuff and I was thinking, how did you meet Eli Roth? Uh, it, that is, speaking of crazy, <laughs> this is a crazy story. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, I had just moved to Los Angeles. This was six years ago, uh, last week, actually. And I went to, uh, I saw a posting online that was like looking for people with abnormalities or, or physical characteristics that are different, this and that. And I was like, oh, sweet, that's me, my hands. So I reached out, um, they're saying they're filming a show called South of Hell taking place in South Carolina. Uh, I sent in my, my uh, reel and resume and all that and everything. And the casting director reached back out and was like, hey, could you come to South Carolina to, to be part of the show? Um, it's not lines or anything, but you'd be like featured in the intro, this and that. I was like, okay, cool. Um, but I don't have money to go to South Carolina. So, <laughs> so I came up with the money to get to South Carolina, made it happen, uh, did, the, did the show, saw Eli on set, but didn't really get the chance to talk to him. It was like right after the, the uh, scene ended or whatever, everybody was eating lunch and doing catering. Um, I was waiting in line to get my food. And then I saw Eli come out of his trailer and he had his, his headset on, he was talking to somebody. and just ironic, randomly, he passed through the catering line right in front of me just to, just to walk through. And I was like in my head thinking, shit, this is my chance to like meet the guy I came all the way out to South Carolina for. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I'm like, oh, so sorry, so sorry. And he's like, what's up, what's up? I was like, Mr. Roth, I'm sorry to cut you off. I hope you weren't talking to anyone important, but <laughs> I just want to say I'm a huge fan, the biggest fan, and I have these really cool hands and I know your genre you don't always do in horror and if you ever need me for anything, I'm your guy. And just, and uh, kind of said it like that. Um, and then he's like, cool, man, cool. Well, let me get back on the phone. I'll hit you up later. And then he came and got me later and was like, uh, hey, I'm doing this thing on Vine, which was an app back then. And he's like, uh, he's like, I'm doing this thing called Six Seconds Scare. We have six seconds to make a scare. And me and Quentin Tarantino are, are hosting it. So we did a scare. And the six seconds was one, two, three, four, five, six and that showed my hands and that vine kind of went viral. And then that was kind of it. I said bye to Eli and, and thanked him and everything. Thought that was awesome. Came back to LA, saw that he was doing a premiere at the new Beverly Center in Los Angeles. Went there to hopefully see him again. Ironically did see him and he showed up and he did his premiere of Hostel and, 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 uh, and then, so I approached him and he's like, dude, what are you doing here? I'm like, I live here. He's like, oh, I thought you lived in South Carolina. I was like, no, I flew there to meet you. <laughs> then, I love that. He's like, well, let me take you out to lunch. So he took, uh, we went to the Soho house, which was a crazy experience by itself. And uh, just chatted about ideas and got to know each other. And then came up with an idea for a show together called A Little Different, because I'm a little different. And he was like, well, what if you hosted something where you traveled around Southern California meeting people with really cool disabilities, really cool uh, abnormalities and showcase their, their talents, you know, despite their dis people chasing their dream, despite disabilities. So I was like, 
yeah. that's what I'm doing out here anyway. So yes, let's make that happen. And we did. We put together a team and, and shot uh, 12 episodes and he executive produced it. And then uh, it was great. And I love that show. I saw a couple of the episodes. It was like, and it's shot so well. And you, you have, again, that there's that charisma that is like, you want to watch the next episode because the host is so like inviting and says, come on in, come oh, on, join you. me. <laughs> come on in. Thank you. I was scared. I mean, I had never hosted before that. So it was a learning experience, but it was a lot of fun, you know, and it was around content and the idea of stuff that I could relate to, which I think really helped. And it just I felt like full circle, you know, cause I, I moved out here to pursue a dream and I am a little different myself. So the fact that I was able to be on screen and have my own show with someone like Eli and also be able to center it around people with that are different themselves was like, you know, right. it was great, but thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 I was thinking how you, you, you have this energy like balls to the wall kind of thing. You're just gonna go for it. And that's what you did. And that's what it takes a lot of the time. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think risk or, you know, jump big, got to. And the thing is, it's, it's that subtle thing that you, you do naturally, you, 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 you go for it without being like stockish. And <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hire me. Right. <laughs> Which you didn't do. <laughs> Thank God. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had that show. True. Uh, oh my God. Um, sure. Tell me. Wh wh I mean, there was one of the interviews I believe on that show with uh, a mutual friend of ours, Kurt Yeager. Yeah, he was on that. And and uh, tell me, tell me about him. Kurt is uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, He's been, uh, I met him on this show. He's one of our guests. We met through uh, an agent, my agent. And then um, we did the show together. We vibed, we kicked it off. And then I've been hanging out ever since. He's been a great role model, a uh, great friend, great brother. Helped me a lot, you know, navigating through this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> there, were, there were harps in heaven singing my name. And like I was, I was saying, like, I he's, need he's to come a piece on of shit. Too. He's a bad guy. He's not good. Don't trust him. <laughs> oh my God. What's up, Kurt? What's up? Uh, David asked me to come on and say, hey, while you uh, were doing your interview. Were you watching the whole time? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you're really too kind. <laughs> How do I look? You know, you look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah I find you rather attractive. That makes two of us. You recognize right? Him, Kurt? You recognize him? Is that me? No, dude, that's Chris Farley. <laughs> oh, Farley. I love it. Hey, watch this. Is that yeah. me? No, that's me. Oh, that's, that's you and then me next to you as a little boy. Yeah, <laughs> no. That's how I feel about it. It is. Look at that one. Yeah, it's a movie I did. So the interview should really be more about me. <laughs> Alex, anyway, let's talk about my latest project. <laughs> I, we did. Actually, isn't your latest, both of your latest projects the same? Exactly. Yes. Actually. Oh. Tommy so, and Bobby. Kurt, Kurt, why don't you take the stand? Why don't you, why don't you really tell everybody what's up here? What do we yeah, got going yeah. on? And how did this happen? How did this connection of these two amazing creators get together? Uh, well, Alex was doing a show with Eli Roth that was like blowing up on Facebook and everything else, YouTube, getting hundreds of thousands of views per episode. And um, we got connected uh, through uh, Gail Williamson and thought that we'd like each other. And so he asked uh, if I'd want to do his show. And I was like, yeah, it sounds great. What are we going to do? And he's like, let's ride bicycles. Let's ride motorcycles. Let's do all this. And so we got together and said, let's ride motorcycles um, for part of the, you know, doing something a little different, which was his show with Eli Roth. Right. Um, right. 
And we went out and rode and had fun and did the interview. And it was right when I either was going to or coming back from shooting Quarry, uh, that show on Cinemax, yeah, where I yeah. play a contract killer. And uh, honestly, you know, Alex sort of kind of blew me away because not only was he good, but he was authentic. And that's very, very hard to find in LA, at least for me. Um, authentic as a, as a person and an actor, huh? Yeah, I mean, authentic first is like a person because, you know, you know, Dave, you've been around a lot. A lot of people, uh, they talk a big talk, but they don't walk a big walk. Right. And Alex does what he says he's gonna do. He worked really hard. He put together the show. He got Eli Roth involved. He created it. He edited it. He worked on stuff. He even paid for a ticket that he got, you know, from- He production. was selling. Yeah. He did that. So he's done all that. And then, you know, he's come back and like gone out for auditions and crushed and book stuff. And then went out for the ABC showcase where 12 out of like 20,000 people get cast. And he was one of the people cast just this last year. And his momentum was just flying off the handle. And then COVID happens. And it's just like, boom, you know, and you're like, oh, so uh, the reason we got along is he's authentic. You know, right. he's going to show up and do the work. And that's a rare thing for someone, uh, I think, you know, they, they like to think the idea of acting is um, fun and interesting and cool. And maybe there's money and fame, but work, Alex shows up for the work. Mm -hmm. That's I, I like that. And so then we looked at each other and said, hey, we should eventually do something. And after a couple of months of talking about it, got together, you know, six months later or whatever, maybe a year later. Right. And we just were like, yeah, what about a show about this? No, what about this? And it was just a little bit of his idea, a little bit of my ideas coming together. And then we said, let's, let's start writing. And so do you both write it. for the show? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, to be honest, without his um, tenacity and worth that work ethic, like, I probably would have quit a couple times. So having him there is what helped push through, you know, to, to actually finish writing 130 episodes. Woo! Yeah. Now, have you filmed some of these? We have filmed all of them. We Ooh. have all of them in the can. And... We are currently working with 10 editors, editing all the content. We have literally five and a half terabytes of footage for this one show. It's, I mean, we had to have shot like one to 90, one to 100 ratio. Like it's really insane. Five cameras. Yeah. It was really hard. And our camera op, like the DP, Adam, you, I think you know Adams, John Lawson's buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lawson. He crushed it. Yeah. Crushed it. And the best thing about Adam is his attitude was unrelentingly good. Yeah. He just was like, all right, energy's down a little bit today, guys. All right, let's, let's bring it up. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, you know, we were writing and directing and acting and props and food and crap and literally everything so you guys do it all in a way i mean yeah I mean, alex you, does everything so you, you alex you direct you write you produce and same with kurt along with kurt yep yep that's the way to do it these days i mean really create your own stuff yeah yeah i mean alex alex you know he's writing something really really funny right now and oh, you mean beside what you just shot besides what we're talking about yeah because we're in post-production on that so we're like all right we're moving on so like, that's done that's yeah that's he, ready to be released he's writing a, a show right yeah. now about two bumbling guys with disabilities right and it's really funny i'm not going to give too much away i'm writing a bmx show and another show based off of a book that i got the rights to with okay. a showrunner yeah. but alex i mean I've read, you know, the first 15 pages and it's, it's, I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with it because it's crazy. Oh my God. We'll be I able to get away with it. We're <laughs> different. He's going to be mad at us. You know what I'm saying? No, I, it sounds <laughs> amazing. It sounds fun. It, and it's interesting to just feel the energy that the two of you have. It, 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 
feels like this, you know, it's like, I, I, I could so see you guys working together so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome working with Kurt, like I was saying before he hopped on. Um, you know, he's been like a, a, not just a role model, but like a brother and a friend, which in LA is really hard to come by, you know, someone yeah. genuine and someone who's actually wanting to help you without wanting to get something in return. And Kurt's just that guy. And he's always working himself constantly, you know, on, on TV shows and, and films and, and his own projects and working with other showrunners that it's like, he's living or he, you know, he's, he's, he's on this way to being what I want to be. So I'm like, just want to hop on board with Kurt all the time, you know? So that's what we're doing. Well, you're also, Alex, you're also a mentor and a speaker, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a mentor for a camp uh, or an organization called No Limits Foundation. And they are a uh, organization for kids with limb loss or limb differences. And it's basically like a traveling camp. There's 10 around the country. Um, they age from range or they age from three to 18. And I go and I speak as kind of an adult mentor who's a congenital amputee myself. And uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Cause I didn't have growing up, you know, same with Kurt, we didn't have camps or places, communities like that where we can go and, and be around other people who were a little different and, and like us. So yeah. being able to be an adult, and be a mentor and speaker at the camp to kids that are a little different. I can be like the person that when I was a kid, I wish I had to look up to, you know? So it's like full circle. Mm. And, uh, love it. Yeah. 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 What, what, this is a question for both of you. What is a person bes beside each other who you want to work with because you've already done that and are planning to do it? Is there someone you really go, no, I wanna, I wanna do a project with them. It's like, okay, we gotta work together. Mm. Like, in, like in the universe? Sure. Oh. Now are we talking dead or alive? So is this fantasy or reality? Yeah, I tell you what, if, if we wanna go there, we could have one person that's dead <laughs> and then okay. one person who's alive. Well, I can do the dead part right away. Okay. If I could work with anybody, it would be Peter O'Toole. <gasps> I would want to just, and I know it might have been like, you know, a disaster at the end and drinking and everything else. Who cares? That's part of who he is. Like, but if I could have been there through, you know, some of his films and projects and just worked with him and seen the mastery of that and the power in his eye, oh my gosh. Like, hit, like, I just, I just feel like him, you know, I mean, I guess, uh, David Lean, since he directed him, you know, in, in Lawrence of Arabia, I think that would be the, right. that kind of a thing, that epic, that I want to see an epic, you know, I want to be involved in an epic. Epic. Something where it's like you literally are... Spartacus! Watching. Spartacus, Ben-Hur, Moses, Ten, or I guess Ten Commandments. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so many, you know, it's like... So that would be, that'd be my, so David Lean, I guess, you know, still around, but Peter O'Toole. So that would be, that would be the dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and who, who's your dead person? You dead dead person. <laughs> well, this is, this has gotten positive. <laughs> well, it started with, you know, Eli Roth is sort of, you know, off the project. Yeah, that, that was a. I love this. Yeah huge uh don't say jesus alex like come on like you're like i want to work with jesus he was doing some good stuff I want to work. jesus is still alive yeah oh there you go you got uh, him there. robin williams <gasps> absolutely oh. robin williams yeah i think it'd be awesome i think his energy would make me feel good on set and off set and he was a beast uh yeah, yeah, yeah. i always tear up you know i think about robin williams and i tear up yeah i just love yeah. him Robin or my man right here, Chris Farley. Chris you know, you know I, it was interesting. I was thinking when you, both of you were talking about it and you said Peter O'Toole, I was thinking Peter Sellers. Oh, I remember Peter Sellers too, yeah. I heard he was like, you know, out there and I don't care. I would go out there you know, too. You know, I'm, I'm a big person for wanting to work with people who are not only talented, but have an amazing reputation for being equitable and fair and trying to find justice in not only an unjust world but an unjust industry and like those are the people that 
I would want to learn from professionally, but I would love to learn their heart a little more so I could apply it to me. Because I'm a hungry, hungry actor, right? Like I'm a hungry writer, producer, and I grab and take and still give, but I'm like, feel like I'm much more clawing without the grace of certain people. So one story I heard was about uh, William H. Macy, that he is a phenomenal role model on set does not let bad behavior continue. Well, if he finds out about it, we'll call you out. And if you don't like it, you're gone. Like you gotta be, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's what I've heard. That's like a good rumor, right? right. But it's like, like, like a Tom Hanks. You would be like, exactly. I just want to, to, you know, yeah, there's acting skills and the rest of it that I can learn from everybody and some truth and everything else. But like, being like, how do you juggle it all also? like? I get it that at your point in your career, you have money and so you can have, uh, you know, help with the laundry and someone going to do some of your taxes and you don't have to do all of it. Mm. But what, what about the first five years, mm. the first 10? Like, mm -hmm. how did you juggle getting uh, married and a kid? And like, when you were living in an apartment, did you want to blow your brains out? Like what, like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't juggle all of that. I can't even imagine, like, that's just, I wish I could juggle more, and I would love to learn that. You know, we, we were talking about throwing balls to the wall at the beginning, you know. So there, there's the juggling. But going back to what you guys were just saying, um, today's word, today's word is mensch. Mensch. Kurt knows about that word. Mensch. And I could, I, I really feel that both of you uh, are menches. Wait, I think I'm thinking of a wrong mensch. <laughs> what, I wait, what do you think a mensch is? I, I thought when I'm complaining at the gym when Kurt and I no, work. No, no, it's positive. Yeah. Uh, it's Yiddish. Do what you is have that? a little Yiddish in you, uh, Kurt? Uh, I've never done 23 or me. I've never actually done it. I mean, uh, I'm pretty smart, so I figure that part of me is Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Mensch, it's like and at least one other part is. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Thing? Yeah, you, you it's know. like it's like it's like a good person. Like you just inherently have goodness in the so, heart. It comes yeah, in the yeah, heart, yeah, like yeah, you were yeah. saying. Um, so so, Mr. Barone. Um, what do you want the most at this moment in your life? Uh, at this moment in my life, I want, uh, can I say two things real quick? Sure. This particular second, I want to get the part I just auditioned for right before this call. <laughs> and also to, uh, that my family is happy and healthy. My sisters are going through some stuff right now that I hope they can, find peace with and, uh, and, and uh, overcome. So I want my family to be good, friends to be good, and uh, I want to work, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May it all come true. Thank you. I think it will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Alex knows a lot of people and people are seeing his work. He was, you know, it's funny on that show, uh, not Shameless, what was it, Alex? Smilf. 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 Alex and I auditioned for the same role, had to read each other doing the role, <laughs> then both were pinned for it, both of us went to the table reads, to teach <laughs> up the table reads, and then it like just the whole show imploded. <laughs> oh my god! Like you know, like so like he's like you know just right right like whoever grabs him isn't gonna get just a good performance and everything else and someone who's authentic on set in terms of being an actor and bringing something true, but they're gonna get a guy who makes the set a better place. So. Oh you should hire him, whoever's watching, like consider it, get him in there, get him on recurring because you want that kind of energy on set every day. So, yeah. so 
Nightcrawler. Hire him as the Nightcrawler. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. We, Make we it happen. We started developing our own version of the story. And Alex is doing a ton of research on it right now. And what he's finding out about the true life behind some of the story, it's just, it, it could be very, very powerful. And once Alex builds the whole, you know, idea and the show and some of the idea, we're going to bring it to some showrunners and have a chit chat. So, and he's got his campaign going on. So maybe you could like include the campaign, the change.org thing. I will. I'll add that to the, uh, to yeah. the credits. Check out the, can and I'll put the picture too on the end. It's cool. Thank like you. have Thank that you. and have that go out and everybody sign on to it and get that thing going. It's already over a thousand people. And it was just some random fan guy who created it for him who was super cool to do that. It wasn't even Alex doing it. Someone else Oh, did. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's oh, that's true. cool. There's people out there that are like, not only do we want Alex to play the character, but it's also about true representation in the Marvel universe. Exactly. I mean, this is the first person that'll actually represent someone legitimately like that in that kind of a way where it wasn't a created character. It was a main character in the universe that will now be played by someone with that same difference. And who knows how, who has acting chops? Acting chops and physical. Like he's jujitsu, like he rolls with dudes, like he fights, he has boxing gloves. He's okay. the one that makes me go to the gym. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I have my little bike in the other room. I know. Um, which you set up all by yourself, you said. I did. I, f I did. I didn't think I could, but I did. Yeah. I threw those bolts and nuts in. <laughs> I tell you, so, okay, no, this is good. So, Alex, so you do boxing, you do judo. What else do you do? I do jujitsu. I don't do judo. Uh, boxing, Kurt and I go to the gym six to seven days a week, um, which is good. I mean, good physically, but I think it, it helps us both mentally it's hard to wake up and go 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 but if you go to the gym and it's the first thing you do and you get the hardest thing done first thing in the morning the rest of the day doesn't seem as as, as tough you know so yeah i feel like it wakes us up mentally and uh keeps us, keeps us good Bye. yeah and he, he does like all the sports stuff with the kids so he's like you know doing trampolines and like playing with kids and teaching them how to stretch and and keep healthy and then like so he's running around with them all the time at the camp. So like he has to be able to play all the sports. So talking about someone who's actually athletic, who could do what Nightcrawler does, like that's Alex, 100%. Thank you guys. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, listen, next time you guys write a show, I want to be in it. See, I'm growing the, the scruff and we all have scruff now. So we, what we would can... you want to play? God. See, I haven't. God, been, you want to play God? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, just cast me as the mensch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>